Excellent. Hello, everyone. The theme of this Gatekeeper Conference is loving the land. And it set me thinking of how that evolved for me in this extraordinary year. Normally, Peter and I are out and about pilgrimaging, and that stopped abruptly. And as with many people, I began to really appreciate my home and surrounding landscape. My offering today will be a photo montage of my local landscape and how I kept alive within myself the sense of pilgrimage and honouring nature and the sacred. I'll now share my screen with the presentation. This is a photo of a dog rose near to our home. I felt it was a bit like me, hopefully a strong radiant inner core, but that manifests in somewhat ragged petals of experience and outer expression. I ask you to bear with me as I walk through these petals, symbolising local pilgrimage, dance and meditation, with the hope that some of my experiences in the landscape will have resonance with you and your experience and will inspire you to continue gatekeeper work. This is a map of the centre of the British Zodiac with High Cross as the occult pole, the crossing place of the Foss Way and Watling Street. We are very fortunate to live in the countryside in North Oxfordshire, which is within the Cygnus constellation of the British Zodiac, as is highlighted here in the left hand corner of the map. One story of the constellation is that it is Orpheus, the Dionysian, who charmed nature with the music of his lyre. And after his death, he ascended into the heavens to become the swan with his lyre at his side. Cygnus is about creativity, the sounding of the creative word, the expression of the liberal arts and sciences. We've lived in this area for over 30 years and have found a north-south, east-west cross of ley lines from the Rollwright Stones to Kenilworth, with Brails Hill as the crossing place of the east-west ley line. And also its sister swan from Stratford-upon-Avon flying down to Banbury. We live east of Brails, between Brails and Banbury. I took to walking a circular route from our home along an old pathway called Mill Lane. The path originally led to a local grain mill. And here's the pathway which is lined by ash and oak trees. I found I was starting my walk by honouring the gatekeeper with the expression from the Bulgarian mystic, Bensuduno. Kindly luminous beings, guardians of this place, Please grant me your hospitality and may love bless you. It's a way to connect with spirit of place and to start to listen to nature. It made my walk into a pilgrimage. You can see three trees in the photo who gradually reveal different roles and natures. The ash tree on the left was the guardian tree and the first of the oak trees on the right was a place of connection and prayer whilst the one behind was my comforter. I found I would lean up against the trunk of the first oak and sense the total connectedness with a living consciousness. The branches connected with the heaven world and the roots connected with the world wide web of tree consciousness through the earth, all with a sense of giving and receiving love. I felt really connected with all the levels and found it was very easy to say the cosmic cross. This is an age old symbol of the earth, of balance and also dynamic connection with nature. I would then say my prayers or just be with the tree and listen. This is a very feminine tree, which allows me to hug her and to give and receive healing balm. 
These trees are near the beginning of my walk and I then go on through the fields, hopefully trying to keep a sense of awareness and alertness to my surroundings, planting footsteps of light and love through the soles of my feet. I mostly found I was in and out of that consciousness, but it was wonderful to see the landscape through all the seasons, something I hadn't really appreciated in such depth before. There is a little stream which runs along the side of the fields, and I found myself singing a song that Alice and Andrew Clark created on their pilgrimages in England many years ago. Flow, water flow from deep within the earth. Fill us with your love, your blessings freely given. It did feel a place to bless and be blessed. David Spangler talks about the blessing fields. We're givers and receivers. Water holds memory and intent and so flows and blesses the land as it winds its way through the landscape. This little hawthorn tree unexpectedly announced that it was the guardian of the stream. There were two tall trees overlooking the stream, so I immediately thought they would be the guardians, a sycamore and an ash, so I was a bit nonplussed. But after that, I always greeted the little hawthorn as the guardian. Here is the sycamore with its verdant growth. It reminded me of Hildegard of Bingen's sense of the greening power of the divine. Most honoured greening force, you who roots the sun, you who lights up in shining serenity within a wheel that earthly excellence fails to comprehend. You are enfolded in the weaving of divine mysteries. You redden like the dawn and you burn with the flame of the sun. Then the storms came and both the sycamore and the ash fell. It was a shock to me. But the trees and the stream seemed to carry on in equanimity. It was as if the change of form was just part of the whole. It then made sense of what the little hawthorn had said to me. As I walk, I skirt around hills. This is Shenlow Hill or Shining Hill, which gives its name to the village of Shennington, where we live. It's part of a range of very old extinct volcanoes with names such as Eagle Hill, Rough Hill, Tyso Hill, from the old Norse god Ty, the god of thunder. Our local church still strews hay in the nave in July from a thunder field. Once we were visited by a Mayan shaman and on seeing these hills he immediately said fire and water this is a very good place for horses and geomancy. The fire coming from the volcanic activity and the water from all the water sources as the hills are a watershed. The water on the east side flowing into the Sherwell through Oxford and Isis to the Thames and London and beyond to Europe and on the other side to the west, the water flows through the tributaries to the River Avon at Stratford and thence to the River Severn and the Atlantic and beyond. It's a truly beautiful landscape and sometimes I meet Mike on my walk. His family has farmed the land for generations. He could point out who owned which fields, what was farmed and he always talked of horses though. They were always in this area. We used to live at Tyso at the foot of these hills, close to the village of Epwell or Epona's well, Epona being the horse goddess. On Tyso Hill, there's a series of horses carved into the red soil. I've marked them with green arrows on this map of Tyso and the hills. This carved horse only disappeared 80 years ago when trees were planted on top of it. And this is what greets you when you arrive in Banbury. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady on a white horse with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. 
The fine lady was Celia Fine, a member of the Say and Seal family of Broughton, just outside Banbury. She was a lady ahead of her time who flouted the norm. It said she rode side saddle throughout England and wrote a journal about her journeys. And we can just about see her on her side saddle here. It can't have been easy riding all that way. Banbury was a hotbed for rebellion and the local lords were the first to support the parliamentarians in the Civil War. There was also a strong suffragette movement in Banbury. Horses are symbols of our thoughts and ideas. And now Banbury is a distribution centre with the likes of Amazon on its boundaries with the M40. Maybe through pilgrimage and prayer, ideas of harmony and equality can be distributed as well as goods. I go shopping in either Banbury, here we go, Banbury or Stratford. So I regularly travel along the A422, which snakes along the spine of the swan, passing through Pillerton Priors and Pillerton Hersey, the crossing point of the two swans. Stratford-upon-Avon is famous for Shakespeare and his plays with its initiatory characters and themes. The symbol in Stratford is the swan, the playwright being the sweet swan of Avon. The Shakespeare plays having gone round the world in thralling audiences for 400 years with the wisdom within the plays. The heart note of the swan has found expression in the plays. This sculpture depicts two swans, the hamsar, or Gemini twins hatched from two swans' eggs, symbolising the mortal immortal, the male and the female united. Again, the sense of honouring and blessing the water, which flows through England to the Atlantic Ocean, is very present. Many roses have been offered over the years. We've been exploring the town's chakra system with Trinity Church and the theatre, both with very vibrant, kindly, luminous beings. Pillet Priors and Pillet and Hersey are on the crossing point of the two swans. In the Celtic tradition, the swan is the familiar of Bridget, the bride, the goddess of the land, synonymous with beauty and grace. It is interesting that the chapel of Pillet and Priors is dedicated to Mary Magdalene, and the church at Pilliton Hersey is dedicated to Mary the Virgin, both embracing the divine feminine. At Pilliton Priors, there's a beautiful oak tree on the site of the chapel, which burnt down in 1666 or maybe seven, supposedly from a spark from the fire of London. The oak symbolizing strength and steadfastness we come here and make mandalas and sing and offer roses, usually at the solstices or the equinoxes. However, the main trees at Pillerton Hersey are the yew, symbolizing resurrection and eternity. In the past, we'd come and sing Teze at the winter solstice, traveling north from the center of Brails Hill up to Warwick along the north-south ley line hopefully imbuing the line with more light and love, which feeds the landscape and uplifts the atmosphere of the area. My love of panurismi, a joyful meditational dance created by the Bulgarian mystic Bensa Duno, is another petal. Panurismi literally means supreme cosmic rhythm. The meditational dance connects music, gesture, and the intent behind the gestures, balancing heaven and earth, embodying the virtues of truth, love, and wisdom, justice, and goodness. Duno envisioned the new golden age and created the panurismi to help us move into the new era in as gentle and as a harmonious way as possible. 
The photo in the right hand corner shows the dancers in the Rila mountains in Bulgaria in August festival time when before Covid up to a thousand dancers gathered on the 19th of August to dance Panurismi, sunbeams and pentagram. This shows the sunbeams formation. Our efforts are less spectacular but we enjoy them nevertheless. His philosophy links strongly to the Orphic mysteries and the sense of the divine within nature. I am in harmony with living nature. May the blessings of love flow through me. Mensa Duno was very keen on affirmations. He said that if we make harmonious gestures through our bodies and our heart intent and thoughts, then the nature and angelic beings, the kindly luminous beings, respond and resonate with that energy, enhancing both ourselves and lifting the vibrations for the world. Over the years, we've danced at the Rollwright Stones, a wonderful stone circle to explore. In landscape terms, it's at the star Deneb in the tail of the North South Swan, a good geomantic place to add our prayer. Six of us, socially distanced, danced there for the autumn equinox. This is the gesture for Aum, the creative word, linking heaven and earth. Over the road from the stone circle is the King's Stone. And from there, you can sing up the ley line, north to Brails Hill, which you can see beyond the Witchford Woods. come to the final petal about linked meditations. When we can't get out into the landscape or we want to link with those who are pilgrimaging, I often use a map as a kind of yantra or home for the spirit and use it as a focus for meditation. This is one for the link for the wheel of life in Scorpio, the candles being a focus for meditation for the places where the pilgrimages were going to take place. And this one, it was for the midsummer solstice. And this was honoring the center at High Cross. We also use the map for the whole of the British Isles hopefully offering something of beauty to the lands. As White Eagle says, beauty is spiritual food, beauty of form, beauty in nature, in mother earth, beauty in color, in movement, in music, in thought, in expression. All these aspects of beauty are so important. By your concentration upon beauty, in your surroundings, in yourself, in your thoughts, try to convey beauty into the lives of others around you. And this is a, a photograph of a very beautiful stream and waterfall up in the Rila Mountains. And I'd like to finish with a blessing from Ben Seduno, which is said at the end of the Panurismi, which is a heartfelt prayer for the whole world. May the peace of love and the pure joy of love live in our hearts forever. Thank you.